We begin with that very encouraging vaccine news from Johnson & Johnson. The company's one-shot vaccine generates strong protection against COVID-19 in a late stage, a large late stage trial. J&J &J says in a study of more than 43,000 people, the vaccine prevented 66% of moderate to severe cases of COVID-19. And it was particularly effective at stopping severe diseases. The nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, weighed in on the news. When one looks at the potential impact on a very important aspect of what we look at carefully is namely severe disease that overall in the United States, in South Africa and in Brazil, the overall efficacy for severe disease was 85%. We have now a value added additional vaccine candidate Johnson & Johnson plans to file with the Food and Drug Administration for an emergency use authorization next week. So for more, let's bring in Bloomberg Healthcare reporter Riley Griffin. Riley, thanks for being here today. Johnson & Johnson's one-shot vaccine, of course, we know it had strong protection against COVID-19, but how effective was it at preventing severe infections and death? It's a great question. In terms of preventing severe infections, Johnson & Johnson's one-shot vaccine was 85% effective, and it was 100% effective against hospitalizations and deaths. That was across race, ages, and regions. So this is really incredible news, in part because we have to stop for a moment and ask ourselves, what is the role of a vaccine as a public hmm. health measure? And it is not just to prevent infections, it's to prevent people from getting sick, to reduce the strain and stress on the hospital systems. What we're seeing here is that J&J's shot has indeed done that. And while many might be looking to compare Johnson & Johnson's efficacy rate, that 66% number, to the more than 90% effectiveness of the messenger RNA vaccines developed by Pfizer, Inc. or Moderna, for example, the reality is you can't have an apples-to-apples -apples comparison anymore. We are in a different stage of the pandemic. Um, variants abound, and Johnson & Johnson conducted quite diverse global trials in South Africa, in Brazil, where some of those variants are taking place. Mm -hmm. So that 66% number is across the board. In the U.S., it was 72%. Um, that's probably a better comparison. But ultimately, we want to be looking at severe and infection okay. and prevention hospitalizations. Riley, I love that you asked that question, what the role is of a vaccine. We will probably explore that at some other time because we don't have a lot of time to dig into the psyche of it, but I want to. However, how does this J&J vaccine compare to its major competitors, Moderna and Pfizer, on efficacy? Yeah, so it is certainly a little bit lower, and you're seeing even in the U.S. that 72 percent efficacy rate compared to that greater than 90 but again, this is a one-shot vaccine. It doesn't have a booster compared with it. You ramp up immunity pretty quickly, uh, a great safety profile, so little to no side effects, um, no anaphylaxis, for example. And the question isn't going to just be about efficacy in this case. It's going to be a, about distribution. J&J's shot can be kept in a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Again, one dose, you don't need people to come back for the second. So the U.S. government is going to be thinking about where can it deploy this vaccine that will really ease the logistical burdens, the headwinds that we've seen over the last few months mm -hmm. as the government has struggled to ramp up administering doses. Okay. And so when it comes to these dosages, when it comes to the variants, do we know if this is effective against the variants of COVID-19? Yes. So in terms of the variants, that's a, a great question. The results produced more evidence that the variants will indeed be harder to ward off. In the U.S., where mutations aren't thought to be as widespread, the vaccine was 72 percent effective. But compare that, for example, to South Africa, where a variant called B1351 is circulating widely. It was only 57 percent effective there. Hmm. And the shot was 66 percent effective in Latin America, where we're also following a Brazilian um, mutation. So we're going to have to follow this closely. Again, with the severe cases of COVID-19 and hospitalizations, that rate was much higher. And that's the thing to look towards. But J&J, &J, Pfizer, Moderna, they're all thinking about these variants. And each one of those companies is developing booster shots and future next generation products that can combat variants. We want to look for 
the next one that might sidestep all of these vaccines. Mm -hmm. Good to know that. And I learned earlier on in this process that as the virus changes often, so do the vaccines. They get tweaks every once in a while. But in the very short one minute that we have left, what would be the next step toward getting this J&J &J vaccine to market? It has to be approved by the FDA. But what's the next step to get it to market? So next week, J&J &J will submit a filing for emergency use authorization in the U.S. And what will unfold over a series of weeks is an analysis of that data and a review from independent experts that will make a recommendation to the FDA as to whether or not this should be authorized. I would expect an authorization come March mm -hmm. and the vaccine doses will be deployed in that very month, no sooner. Okay, in March, no sooner for J&J's vaccine. And uh, Riley Griffin, thank you so much for being here. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.